New, old, forgotten. Get the scope on products with hot or not with Keith Pepper. Keith Pepper Puffer. Sid is Sid is a little drunk. All right, everyone, welcome to Hot or Not, a show about hot new products and tips. And today we are doing Tools of the Trade Part Tool. Part two. Part two. <laughs> Part two. I have my guest again, and the guy that really is uh, the provider of this great presentation, Jason Rasmussen. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, and I got the name right, right? Rasmussen. Yep. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> yep. Nailed it. Those, those those Danish last names. Yeah. We'll go back to episode one to, to see me fail at that like five yep. times. <laughs> But like I was saying, we're here to talk about tools of the trade. Uh, we have uh, J um, uh, Jason's updated it with a bunch of new um, tools, and uh, we want to kind of touch on it, and uh, as well as uh, kind of talk about some new stuff that's kind of coming down the line um, this year. Um, I think we're all kind of really excited about the uh, the West Coast uh, Christmas experience, right? You're going to be yeah, doing a presentation so there. The West Coast Christmas Experience is coming up um, April 25th and 26th. It's going to be at the Harmon Center in uh, Northridge, California. And this is going to be a, a pretty epic um, convention here. So it's it's definitely a new thing. It's being headed up by David Peace, myself, and a bunch of other people. So it's, it's a team of people. And, um, yeah, you're definitely going to want to come. There's going to be different um, – uh, Things you can learn about new new things. Um, I, I don't even know where to start on the list of things. Um, I will be presenting two uh, presentations there. I will be doing my tools of the trade. So this here, I will be doing the full one uh, there. And I'm also going to be doing a Pixels 101. So if you know absolutely nothing about Pixels or you want to get into Pixels, come to this. You'll learn everything from the most basic. You can literally know nothing and then come out basically knowing where to go and we're not going to talk down to you or anything like that we we welcome you we welcome new people in the hobby we want you to learn more things and share the information yes and you can find more information on the uh facebook page so just search facebook for west coast christmas experience thank you jason yeah that's really it's going to be a really fun um thing you guys are putting on uh, i think it's going to kind of grow throughout the years but it's already starting off with it a big bang. I think it's going to yeah. be great. And you're coming too, right? Yes. Yes, Sweet. definitely. All right. I don't think JR would not let me go. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm really stoked about the subject, tools of the trade. You know, this time of year, we're all kind of start, um, you know, you're starting, you're planning your builds and everything like that. You're taking your measurements. Um, you got to kind of, I think right now is the proper time to kind of um, buy the proper tools, right? The proper tools so you can you know, do the job effectively and safely too, right? So yeah, definitely safe. Safety is really key. I mean, there have been some really bad things that have happened to people every single year and we want to make sure you're safe. Yeah, exactly. Not only you, but your viewing audience. Once again, the, the Professional, Professional Triers Holiday, Holiday Lighting, Lighting Show <laughs> has raised the bar, teaming up with another awesome sponsor, Zazzle, Zazzle, to provide you, our VIP listeners, with some cool, awesome, one-of-a-kind Professional, Professional Triers gear, gear, including the Hot or Not Shot Glass, the Blinky Flashy Lowdown Notebook, the Professional Triers Blinky Gear Beer Stein, the ever-so-popular David Peace Not a Vendor T-shirt, the must-have Robert Petty Make Rob Great Again T-shirt, oh, yeah. the one-of-a-kind Jordan Nash. Do you like my decorations? T-shirt. And of course, the must-have Professional Triers Blinky T-shirt and much, much more. You can even create your own one-of-a-kind Professional Triers gear. So go to TriersWag.com. That's T-R-I-E-R-S-S-W-A-G.com and get your Professional Triers gear today. So I think we're, I think I kind of want to jump right into that in a way important tools to kind of have in general and safety wise um just to kind of i'm going to jump here and do i think a headlamp is a safety product to be able to kind of see in front of yourself that's a really important thing to kind of have 
Yeah, especially at night because you're going to be putting things up, tearing things down, repairing things at night, and having a headlamp so both your hands are free. And this one you can just recharge with USB. So every single light plugged in USB, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And the ne the next thing I think is kind of a safety thing too is these bucket bosses are actually kind of a safety thing. Not having your tools all around the ground, having an area that you can just throw them in and carry it on a bucket, it's a lot safer going up a ladder putting your tools in that. Yeah, that's the thing I love about this. You could literally just throw in your tools mm -hmm. and it's easily accessible. I mean, toolkits are nice, but sometimes you're gonna have drills or other miscellaneous things and you can just put it in there. And I find myself using this way more than I use a, a toolbox. Yeah, same here. Uh, I found myself going to the toolbox a third of the time that I used to. And it's all because I know what I'm gonna be using every year. And so as long as I kind of keep that this bucket boss organized well enough. And like you said, it's so handy just to throw things in there. Yeah, extremely handy. In fact, my wife found me this a number of years ago uh, for Christmas and I got it and I, oh my gosh, I've never turned, never looked back. Mm -hmm. I kind of, um, and of course, a tool belt also, where it kind of goes on the same line. You got to be safe is going up. I think uh, if I ever see anybody walking up a ladder with the, with a drill in their hands, I mean, that's, we have safety checks at work and that that's a safety check. Somebody has to call that person out. Well, not only just safety, but mm -hmm. just to have it when you're doing certain things. So like if I'm putting things up or tearing things down, I will have, I, I won't need the bucket boss, but I'll need certain tools. So if I have that tool belt on me with a bunch of zip ties and a, a, a wire cutter and a stripper, then it's right there. So I can just work very fast and very effectively. Yeah. And then I think this is kind of overlooked in our hobby. I, this is definitely an OSHA thing. If you've ever dealt with like a scissor lift or stuff like that, you're going to be required to wear this at your work. And this is something that I, I, I admittedly do not use, but I'm going to start using this. And uh, I think um, Jason was mentioning earlier that, you know, you can, you know, set uh, anchors on your roof and it makes this whole system so much safer. Yeah. I mean, I will be honest too. I mean, I only have a single story house, but believe me, I would not want to fall off of that. I do not have this yet, but I know enough of in the, uh, in the hobby, people do use these and I'm going to be getting my roof redone hopefully pretty soon. And when I do, I am putting anchor points at every single major spot on my roof and I'm going to anchor every time I go up and no shame in that. Nope. And of course, fire extinguisher, another product that you might be surprised you're overlooking, but it's yeah. very important. Yep. Get a good fire extinguisher. Um, this one's rated for like 10, 12 years and you can refill them um, at the end. So you can have them checked and believe me, they're really not that expensive. So get one in, in the house, get one in the garage when you're hooking up your pixels. Just in case, you never know. Yes, exactly. You better to have it or than not to, you know. Yep. And uh, if this PDF is going to be available on the Professional Triers website, um, as well as uh, Jason's provided links to all these products as well, so you can check them out and purchase them yourself on Amazon and other uh, links uh, websites. And so uh, this is a great resource, uh, Jason. So thank you so much for You're providing You're welcome. This. And speaking of the links, absolutely nothing is sponsored. I don't see, I don't see a single penny for any of this. It's so mm -hmm. this is all just pure recommendation. Yeah. So now that we kind of get into the safety, biggest part of the, of the, of the build, um, something overlooked sometimes, unfortunately, I think the next thing we kind of want to talk about is we're building now and, uh, we're probably going to hit on a few things that we've talked about in the previous episode, but please, um, we definitely are not going to hit on everything. So please do go back to that and, and see that and check out this PDF. And if you're in Southern California, check out Jason's presentation at the West Coast uh, Christmas Experience. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's dive into kind of like hand products, you know, the, the building aspects of it. So again, this is a product we definitely have touched on really quick on the last episode, but something to be said again. So this is yeah, the, the step down drill bit, it just works wonders for 
you know, you're, you're drilling a pixel, you're drilling a hole for a cable gland or something, and you're, you go and you're like, oh man, I need to go a little bit more. So you just drill a little bit more. You don't have to change chucks or anything. Just keep going. And then boom, you got it. Exactly. And we're all, I don't know. It's not necessarily too early. We're so, a lot of us are pushing pixels too around this time of year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, these tools are, are amazing pixel pliers. Um, these ones, especially I find the most handy, um, these kind of more, uh, plier versions instead of more of a monkey wrench versions that you kind of see. I don't know what, what yeah, they are, they are, they can, they can be quite effective. I mean, I was building a whole bunch of stuff like two years ago and I found the pixel pliers to be useful. Um, my build that I did last year, I found it easier to do by hand. So it really just depends. Um, it's not necessary, but they are nice to have for certain things. They will only work on bullet, bullet nodes, though. So if you're using square nodes or anything else, you're kind of out of luck, but um, it can save your hands. And uh, this uh, this is kind of becoming my like most used tool at the end of the year, around like Janu beginning of January and stuff like that, when I'm taking things down. Um, uh, this is because zip ties, I find that they're great at getting into this little nooks of where I'm mm -hmm. using the zip ties to cut them and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I will say, um, yeah, this tool right here is when I'm building or tearing down or anything, it is always at my side, but just this last year, I have a tool that has replaced this. And I think uh, can we go to that one? Part. Yes. So this was recommended electrician scissors. So on the right-hand side is the standard electrician scissors that you see everywhere. Um, JR recommended those. Um, I got those for my work, and I thought they were fine. They were good. Um, but it didn't really do everything I needed it to do. So I looked around for other electrician scissors, and I found this other pair by, made by Wiss, uh, Crescent, same company. And you can buy them at Home Depot. And these are genius. So they have a really nice sharp tip, so you can cut pixels perfectly with that. You see that little dip um, in, the, in, the, um, in the scissors right there? You can easily cut through ethernet cable. And it's so sharp that if you just kind of do it a little bit, you can score the cable. Um, oh. Also on the top, it has wire strippers. And if you really wanted to, those metal things in the, in the middle, you could use that as kind of like a makeshift crimper. And the bottom of the scissors are tough enough that you can literally, if you want to, like hammer things with it. So it's kind of like a, a general tool of the trade. But my gosh, for, for cutting zip ties and, and scoring wire and everything, this, this has surpla uh, uh, surplanted the diagonal cutters. And yeah. So that's always on my side now. I love that thing. Yeah, I'm going to check these out. I'm going to click this link. I'm going to make sure to save that for later. Well, I could do that later, but I'm at Home Depot. Home Depot. Yeah. They're incredible. Whiz. That's cool. Yeah. And the, and the way the electrician scissors work, they're, they are more robust. They have a, a better metal in them and they're slightly serrated. So when you cut wires or cut multiple wires, it actually grabs onto them and it can cut right through them like butter. Oh, that's awesome. It's always good to have a sharp knife. I mean, that's important. That's a safety thing in itself, too. I mean, you, you're cutting a dull knife, you end up cutting yourself. Mm -hmm. Or it could happen very easily. It's all the uh, Boy Scout thing, right? Yep. So uh, I love these things, self-adjusting wire strippers. I remember when my buddy brought those out like five or six years ago, and I was just mm -hmm. like, what? What? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the one to get. I mean, you, you go on to any one of the forums, and this is the one tool that people just don't know about. But once they do, they cannot stop singing the praises of them. You can strip one wire, two wires, three wires all at once. You don't have to adjust anything. Uh, you're going to love it. And yeah. make sure you buy this brand because other ones, they just don't work as good. They don't grip. Like I find that the cheaper ones, I made the mistake about like a, I saved 10 more dollars. And did not worth saving ten more dollars because the grip on the top here, where the metal piece work actually needs to kind of grip onto the sleeve of the jacket mm -hmm. or the wire, it just loses it, its grip over time. So you end up sh sheaving more. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that loose grip anymore. And so yeah, you know, save this brand is amazing. Vice grip for sure. 
Uh, yeah, our, really our, good. And it can do crimping. It can crimp in a pinch. Don't use it for crimping. Use it for wire stripping. Yeah. So, yeah, wire crimping. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a guy that just loves the old school one on the right. I, you know, I do too. I do have um, a self, uh, a, a ratcheting one, not this one. I changed it because the one that I had before, it didn't really work well for me. So some other people recommended this brand. Uh, like I said, I don't have it yet. I don't necessarily need it. I still do use the traditional one. And you know what? It does the job. You really can't go wrong with the traditional one. Yep. That's my feeling too. And like I've, it's been the ratcheted ones. I made them work year and after year but what i find is i i have to i do it one direction and then i either have to spin the, the wire 180 or have to mm. spin the ratchet you know around and then try to get to it because it's like there's just little divots in the grip where it has more force in one area than the other and yeah. so it ends up bending part of the metal better than the other part of it and you just don't yep. get a good grip I've had that problem with the ratcheting. I've also had it where you kind of crimp down and then it'll just push the metal right out. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the point now? Where the other one, it's you can be a little bit more precise with it. I mean, yeah, it it has wire stripping on it. It can do wire stripping. Use the other ones. Yeah. But this is better for crimping. Definitely. You know, I just I it's funny. I I didn't use a soldering iron for like a year and a half. And two days or a week and a half ago, I was needing a sired, a soldering iron. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I found myself looking back onto your PDFs and stuff because I didn't want to make a mistake of buying like a, a $5, $10 soldering iron and end up regretting it and stuff like that. So, but you know what? The thing with soldering irons is you can go cheap. If you're not going to use it that much, you can go cheap. So, mm -hmm. like, I have, I have just a standard Radio Shack. Um, soldering iron that I have had probably since elementary school and it still works. But there was one time I lost it. I could, I didn't know where it was. I was at Harbor Freight. I bought the $5 one. You know what? If you just need to solder a couple wires, it works. It's fine. So it really depends on what you're doing. Just basic soldering, kind of anything will do. If you're doing a lot of soldering, then that's when you definitely want a specific soldering iron. Yeah. You want maybe the station or something like that. Yes. But mm -hmm. yeah. Other so. than that, don't overthink it. No, exactly. And it's becoming such a tool that people find themselves like using it on a very specific part of their, of their builds, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's, uh, I think the other things we kind of touched on the crimping and, uh, and, and, um, we'll touch on some other tools too, that really have kind of sub substituted a lot of the uses of, of soldering, at least yeah. in a lot of our shows. You're going to find yourself doing a lot more, uh, crimping, through butt connectors or through uh, scotch locks or dolphin connectors, then you will find soldering. You will do soldering in this hobby, I guarantee it, but it's just a whole lot easier and faster to go the other way. That's the other thing, you want things so you can work fast because this hobby can take up a lot of time and you wanna make sure that you make an efficient use of your time. Yes, efficient. And soldering takes up a lot more time, especially if you wanna do it right. I mean, I guarantee there's soldering whizzes that are probably like, oh yeah, I can do that faster, but most people can't. No. And that's what makes these cool things, you know, mm -hmm. one of the cool tools that we can use now, these mm -hmm. uh, heat shrink butt cr crimpers. Yep. Um, I think they're great. Uh, I'm not a, the biggest fan of the soldering versions just because um, I just never had great results with them. But that's just my personal. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. The soldering ones are the one on the right mm -hmm. uh, where you twist the wires together. You put it through there and you heat it up and then it, it shrinks the tube and it also heats the solder. Um, some people like those. You're going to go through hundreds, if not thousands of these. And so on the left-hand side, that is more cost effective. That's a butt crimp. So you just put the two ends. You can even fit, sometimes you'll need to fit like two wires in one end and one in the other. And you can do that with this. And so you just crimp it, heat it up um, with the heat gun and you're good to go. I think uh, these are two of my favorite things that mm -hmm. have replaced both the heat shrink butt crimpers and solders and soldering in general. Yeah. Are these dolphin connectors and especially this year, the scotch locks, the UR2s yeah. or the UY2s. Yeah. So again, back to the soldering iron, too many people overthink this. They're like, I need to repair something on the roof or it's, 
it's at night, I got a, a strand out, I need to bring my soldering iron, or I need to go get a portable soldering gun and do, no, 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 no. Just use these. So what you can do with, with either one of these, you stick the wires in, unstripped. You do not need to strip the wires. Um, you stick them in, you crimp them down, and it will uh, pierce the wire, it will touch into that, and it will also um, make sure that it's uh, waterproof as well with either one. So the dolphin connectors can be a little smaller than the scotch locks. So I use both, it just depends on what you wanna do. But I mean, not only for quick repairs, but also if you're just plain lazy, like when I was doing my arches, I was doing the bottom ones and the way I had to get into them, I had to use the butt crimps and I was you know, really short on time. So I just use the dolphin connectors. They've never had a problem. Mm -hmm. I upgraded my mega tree last year. And again, very tight on time with the toddler. I used nothing but scotch locks to put everything in. And we had tons of rain here in Southern California. Not, not a single one went out. Yeah, no, those to the scotch locks um, this year, so handy. Uh, used to make repairs or just do quick builds during the year. I was just, you know, a little quick connection I didn't think I needed to make because I thought I customized the wires just right. But hey, boom, boom. Took like, t actually, it was so funny when um, uh, David Peace came up here to help us build, help with JR's build for the Great Christmas Light Fight. Mm -hmm. the um that was his first experience with the scotch locks <laughs> he took them out of my because we were all using them there and uh it, he took them out of my bag and he mm -hmm. ha took the box and he was just like oh and i'm like you know he was using like normal uh uh the great thing about the scotch locks is you can use just normal pliers to kind of crimp them down yep. but i do yes. have the special tool that it, that they make that's like more flat and mm -hmm. it, it makes it just slightly easier to use. So that, that's kind of a cool thing to have. Um, yeah, but because on mine, I was just using, I mean, just a simple multi-tool with the yeah, pliers, that works. just squeezing them down. And that's that's all you need to do. Yeah, so You really don't need anything it. fancy for them. No. But, I mean, I still love the butt crimps. I mean, those are really your go-to number one thing. But if you are just want to do it really fast or you need a quick repair, then these are going to be great. Yeah. But I love David's reaction when he was using, not the tool, but the scotch locks themselves. Mm -hmm. He was just like, wow, this is so easy. Now I know what you guys are talking about. So it's, yeah. you know, it's worth an investigation. Anything to make the job go easier and faster. Mm -hmm. And I love, I think like this year, the Ryobi, the wireless one that kind of came out this year. So these are uh, glue guns. You got a cordless and a cord one. And I'm, I'm kind of bringing this up because um, you know, it, it, we're kind of figuring out how we're going to put things up on the house and, um, you know, maybe doing some repairs and stuff like that. And I find depending on your house, like mine's a stucco. So I started to play around with the glue guns, uh, for certain mounting options and stuff like that. And I got to say that it's actually, if you get the industrial glue, which is not that much compared to the, the regular hobby glue, um, it's, it's holding up pretty well. Um, so that, that's kind of my go-to, uh, tool, uh, starting out this year is, uh, is this glue gun surprisingly enough. Yeah. Full disclosure. I don't, I haven't used a single glue gun in my hobby. So these were recommended by David Peace. So I put those <laughs> in here cause I know that he was using those like, you know, like water. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think cause he, he's, he's on stucco too. So imagine having to mount the, uh, his matrix and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I have stucco, and I do have a link in here on how I do the stucco in my house. We, is that the next one? I think it might be. Okay. Yes, so this is what I do for my stucco house. Because if you're in California, you have earthquakes. Um, everyone, pretty much everyone has stucco. But this works for other things, too. So what I have found, what I do for mounting certain props onto the house is if you're using stucco, to use, you know, drill, drill a little hole, put this um, anchor in, this is the perfect size for it. And then you just take the eye hook and you screw it in. And if you want to be really discreet, go ahead and put a little paint on it, the same color as your house, no one's gonna see it. So it definitely passes the wife factor approval. Mm -hmm. So I have these on my fascia, um, just the eye hooks. So the eye hooks are just going right into the wood. And then on the stucco, I have points uh, throughout on the stucco where I've drilled and I put the hooks in. So when I go ahead and put up, oh, there goes my microphone. When I go ahead and put up my um, uh, 
my uh, uh, EMT pipes that have everything mounted to them or certain props. I just put it on, use a zip tie, and you're done. And those things do not move out at all. And when you're ready to take it down, you just snip the zip tie, pull the thing right off, and you can leave the eye hooks in your house. And no one's going to see them. Yeah, I'm very religious with my eye hooks. I have a lot of them in the same position as yours. And I just, yeah, exactly. So easy to, to yeah. To, I use carabiners to, mm -hmm. to hook the longer props that have wires that go down to. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it easy each year. It's just boom, hook the carabiners, yeah. unhook the carabiners and put them away. And uh, it's, you know, uh, underlooked product in a way. Yeah, uh, it, it, and it's really nice to have. So it's like when I put on my arch around my door or on my fascia, make sure everything's aligned. Like I'll even take a little marker and I'll mark it next to the eye hooks. So when I'm up there mounting it, I don't have to line up the pixels. I just line up where the the pipe went last time and then I just zip tie it and it's done. That's great. Because everyone is always asking, how do you mount stuff to your house? No, um, this is not the only way, but this is a really good way to do it. Yeah. I think like, uh, that's the most asked thing. And uh, mm -hmm. when you get going on building things, it's like, wait, okay. So now I have this prop. Well, how are, how are you hooking it up? You know, yeah. you just, you're going to ask around. You're not going to want to reinvent the wheel at first. Yep. And, and, and everyone's house is different. You some might have vinyl siding. Some might have wood. Some might have, um, you know, an, a, a special house they don't want to drill things into. So everyone's mounting is different. I totally understand. Mm -hmm. But especially for stucco and wood, these eye hooks work great. Yep. And like, I'm going to bring this slide up because you have a note here. But and it's a very important note. But in general, zip ties are kind of <laughs> very used in our hobby. I think somebody in the Great Christmas Light Fight, he his whole thing was zip ties, zip ties, zip ties. And I, people were even commenting at the end of that episode, like, "Okay, who's going to invest in the zip tie companies now?" <laughs> yeah, you, no, seriously, you cannot have enough zip ties in this hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing with the zip ties, you want to make sure if you're going to have things out in the sun year after year after year. Definitely get the ones that are UV rated. So the, like the ones on the right that I have listed, it says UV black. Uh, typically, you're not going to find white in UV. But um, so use the UV black for things that are always going to be out there reusing it year after year. If you're just going to use it for one year, two years, three years, four years, it's fine. You can use the white ones. They, the white ones will not hold up like all year round, I'm sure in a couple of years, they may start to degrade with the sun, but too many people overthink that they're like, oh, I can't use those at all. They're going to degrade with the sun if I take it outside for five minutes. You're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You can use the white ones. Yeah, I, I use the white ones, but you know, never, I'm never going to use it to knowing that it's not going to last long. Not long term. Yeah. So anything that I put up that I'm going to cut mm -hmm. for the next year, I'm just going to use the white ones. Yep. Fine. Um, plus I can see the white ones easier. It really just depends. I mean, typically you can find the white ones a little bit cheaper. Um, but the, and plus I know the white ones, the white ones I cut, the black ones I don't. Easy mm -hmm. enough. It's funny. I, I found, I was price checking a thousand uh, piece of zip ties and it was actually cheaper to get it at the stores than that. Just it, that yeah, it can be, but also, yeah, make sure that you check because there's some that, just because it's black doesn't mean it's UV. Yeah. So make sure you say it says UV. And uh, the next two slides I'm going to bounce. So the I, I labeling things, when you're starting to take things down, you're building things now, marking things with permanent markers are, is so important. So then you're not really trying to remember what you did from last year or you know, you're starting to build things now, but you're not going to be putting them out there until like Thanksgiving time. Mm -hmm. Or Chris or uh, Halloween time, so marking them now while you're building them makes it easier. Uh, yep. Marking the back of the coro one, two, three, or where to start, where to end, so easy. Yeah, mark everything because you will forget. Um, and like this year, when I first first started building, I was just using permanent markers, but I found out that over the years they've started to fade. So someone recommended, uh, actually, when I first did this presentation. Uh, a while back, someone recommended, hey, they make um, weatherproof ones. Oh, okay, really? So I bought the weatherproof ones. And so like when I was taking down my props this year, I went back and I remarked 
some of the items that were fading. That's really cool. I didn't know, you know, it's funny. People think permanent marker, they think permanent marker, mm -hmm. but there actually is a difference. Yep. Huh. Yep. You learn, see that, and that's the great thing about sharing all this information. Yeah. And then this also kind of comes through label maker. I was just talking about JR the other day because when I was working on his place, his label labels just seem so different than what I've used. And so um, having a really good label maker uh, mm -hmm. and not necessarily the label maker itself, but the labels themselves, uh, they do have so many different brands and so many different, uh, same with the permanent markers. It's the different ones or you'd be surprised. So. Yeah, you can get different types of labels that work that are like vinyl labels mm -hmm. or like kind of cloth labels. It really just depends. I haven't done enough testing to know which ones are going to be better for the outside. Uh, and a lot of my, so, I mean, it really just depends. So far, my labels have all stood, so they've been fine. Um, you don't need to get a super fancy label printer. In fact, sometimes you can find these brother ones for like 10 bucks. Yeah. They're going to do the job. That's where I got mine. I got it off of Office Max promotion, I think, and it was yeah. actually free. So I bought like paper, which I already needed, and then mm -hmm. I got the label maker for free. Yeah, and there's like Dymo and other brands. I mean, I like the Brothers, uh -huh. but as long as you get it labeled, that's what matters. Well, Brothers makes amazing printers, so. They do. They, they really do make uh, some good printers. Mm -hmm. So multi-tools. So, you know, I, I – I think with building the whole year round, you should have one of these in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, you you know what? You you can't go wrong with multi-tool. Guys love multi-tools. You know, I you got the Leatherman and the Vic Pornox. It, it really a multi-tool is really kind of a personal thing. So it really depends on what you are doing more of. So for some people, like a Leatherman with certain tools is going to be the better tool for them. Um, for me, I personally I love the Vic Pornox. So uh, I have a lot of these that fits me better. It really depends on you, but having a multi-tool is so good just to have in your pocket so that you can just take it out. You can do a quick repair, quick fix. It's awesome. Yeah. Another good tool to have is just power tools in general um, and having a great bit set. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to use dull uh, knives, uh, scissors, and you definitely don't want to use dull drills bits. So um DeWalt's an amazing sure, yeah, great get a brand, good but cordless yeah. drill. Cordless drill, yeah. Cordless drill, because you will be taking that thing everywhere. Yeah, I know that that thing's strapped to me just like the multi tool around this time of year. Mm -hmm. A lot of, lots of drilling into the EMT. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't have a good cordless drill, or you want to get a make a, a good one. This is the one that I have, and it has been fantastic. It's been beat up, knocked around and everything, and it has not even skipped a beat. I feel bad. I, I, this is kind of an important safety thing as well. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot that at the very beginning, but um, GFI, GFCI mm -hmm. uh, outlets, um, you, you know, most houses nowadays have that um, built in, but they also sell external ones or in-wall ones, right? Or, or in-line yeah, so ones? What, yeah, so what this is, is it's a ground fault circuit interrupter. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if it sees that the electricity is going haywire, that there's something wrong that, you know, like, you know, I'm not an electrician, but I know enough uh, to be safe. And like, I know here in California, I don't know how it is for other places, but it is required that in every single bathroom, you're supposed to have a GFCI outlet. Mm -hmm. For outside, think about it this way. You have a lot of high-powered electronics on the outside of your house. It's going to be in the weather. It's going to be in the rain. You're going to have cords that are probably you know, going through puddles of water. In fact, mine does too sometimes. What you need to do is you need to have every single thing that's running outside connected back to a GFCI outlet. It is absolutely essential. You want to be safe. You want to protect your equipment, but you want to protect yourself. You don't want some ground fault to happen and it not to be able to stop that and to either electrocute you or someone else. So like every single outlet that I have on the outside of my house, I have a G uh, FCI plug. And so you can reinstall those yourself. If you don't know how to do that yourself, or if you have another place where you just need to kind of patch something in, you can buy this yellow one and you can put it in line with something else. It's easy enough to do, but it is a huge 
safety factor. And I've, I've seen people on the forums where they say, oh, I, I keep tripping my circuits outside and I keep having to go and I just plug it back in and reset it. If you're tripping circuits, you have a GFCI problem and you need to get one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always kind of read about the people that are doing tomato cages and uh, in cans, and they always are saying their their outlets are tripping, or you know they're going, and uh, that's a sign. <laughs> so, yeah, that that is a sign that something's that that something could be wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually causing a short, but I mean you could have a lot more bad things happen to your house. You could have your house literally burned down. Yeah. So. And, and I've, I've seen fires from certain posts that people have done. Um, make, sure you get, make sure you get these for all your outside equipment, anything that's going to be anywhere remotely close to water. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now, like, uh, we're all kind of – I'm taking measurements of a couple of things. I'm kind of planning some coral props and some parts of my house and stuff. And so, you know, you're going to be standing up on – you know, simple step ladders and stuff like that to get those measurements. And so, uh, it's, I, I actually have this exact, uh, step ladder. Um, uh, and so this great thing to have as well as a, a regular, um, multi-positional ladder too, to get into the higher spots. Yeah. On the, on the ladders, like that last one, that's a really good point for just general multi-purpose work. You can put your tools on the top. It has the big wide legs. So if you're putting it in dirt, it's not going to sink down. Um, but on the next one for a ladder, um, this is again, one of those areas where you do want to spend the extra money and you want to get the quality brand. So this is a Werner, uh, multi-purpose ladder. You can get other ladders too. Um, but if you want one that's versatile, they can, you know, turn into like an A-frame or all the way straight up. Um, this one is really solid. Um, they're, they're known for their quality. And I, I use that to get up and, up and down my roof and other areas too. And they look a lot more solid uh, than, they are a lot more solid than what they look like. Um, but I know there's other brands that are cheapy brands. You don't want those. Those are going to collapse on you. No, exactly. No, my neighbor has this exact brand too. And I, I borrow it all the time. Um, I have, Werner's other, uh, their what the A frame version as well, but these multi position ones are so extraordinarily handy, and yeah. the Werner ones are so night and day compared to the uh, the name other kind of the other cheaper brands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I love the yeah. Well, what's also cool about these is if you look in the lower right-hand corner uh, on the picture, see where it says step ladder? Yeah. So um, my um, uh, driveway is at a slope. So when I want to get up onto my roof, I put it in that position, and it's a lot more safe to get up to the roof because now the, just the way that the driveway is, I can go up and down way easier. If I put it like in an A position, it's kind of tilting back, huh. and you don't want that to collapse on you. I'm like, yeah, that's a brilliant, that's, that's a good point. That's very well point. Cause like I, I make the A-frame work in a lot of places that just to make it work, mm -hmm. but really, honestly, you should be using the right tool for the job mm -hmm. and this job for some of the landscape that I'm in, I should be using a ladder like this. So I can position it in all these different kind of ways. So I'm in a, a safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, uh. I'm not to look into that. Yeah, uh, kind of sick of borrowing my neighbors. <laughs> it, it's hefty too. I mean, it, it is. It is. It is got some heft to it. It does. Oh, did you lock up? No. Nope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm, like I, I'm still here. I'm just thinking about what's next. <laughs> um, Keith locked. I'm here. <laughs> okay, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what we want to talk about next because uh, I don't know if we want to get into electronics, maybe the wires. Uh, at least build boxes. People want to do uh, build yes, boxes. Yes, yes. I can't believe I skipped that. that. People are always asking, what do you put your stuff in? Yeah. Okay. All right, so the next thing I think we should probably talk about, obviously, well, you got both. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's get into, um, uh, I think, build enclosures. Um, mm -hmm. 
we recently had an episode building a uh, build enclosure on uh, the new Trier's workshop, so check that out. But uh, I, I love the cable guards, um, such a simple little enclosure, right? Yeah, it, it's very used very wide in, in our industry. Um, things are made for it, like the mounting plates. Uh, you can fit in uh, the mean wheel power supplies and controllers into it pretty easily. So yeah, they are very versatile. Um, at least for me, I'm a little bit more concerned about the water tight. It's not meant to be watertight, but you can have it mounted vertically and it could be weather resistant. I did just a simple little test and sprayed hose a, a hose against mine one time and I did get some water in. So not waterproof. So whenever there's rain coming, I always put a plastic bag on mine. I don't totally trust it, but I do use these. I, I use these uh, for more of like, um, so I have a F48 in it. I have a, an F, the new F40B that Dan's selling as, as well. Mm -hmm. And I have it uh, in different locations, uh, different properties. But every place I have it, what I use the cable guards for is usually uh, under um, – the eaves or something like that um and i paint it so it looks the same color as the eaves mm -hmm. and it really it looks completely professional like and i have them all the installation I just have them up there year round because the clients never really say anything about it they forget it's up there and it's like right well these are used in professional applications exactly and yeah, if you have it under an eve or an awning where you know that the weather's not going to get to it, yeah, it's going to be totally fine. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it is not made to be weatherproof. It is made to be weather resistant. And like I said, I don't fully trust it to just be totally out in the elements. Yeah. Um, and and I know a lot of other people don't too. But yeah, putting it under an eve, that's perfect. It'll be nice and kind of low profile. Yeah. And it's it's kind of a uh, once you start actually packing it full of stuff, it doesn't have a lot of room. So you know, I, I'm kind of at the point when I'm building these enclosures, I like to kind of have a lot of room, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of grow or kind of just when I need to get in there to do repairs or something, which is a rare thing. But you know, you want to be able to get the room. So the cable guard cable guards are kind of nice, but they're they're hard to grow into. They're so, not roomy. They're not, not roomy. They're good for single purpose applications. Mm -hmm. But that's why I kind of like the newer ammo boxes, the bigger mm -hmm. bud boxes. This, this stuff, I love the ammo boxes are my go-to. This one specifically. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. In fact, my my main box that I have, I have it in my garage, but this is the one that I have mm -hmm. for my main box, and I have my controller in there, my power supply, my FM transmitter, everything is is in there. Mm -hmm. And it's water, it's waterproof. They so. those, these are waterproof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they're so sealed they got a gasket in it too and if you get them for the first time and there's nothing else in it and you try to open it it's like it doesn't want to open too well you know it, it's got to have some weight to it for you to actually easily open it the first time you open it, it's like whoosh, all the air kind of gets sucked into it or something <laughs> yeah and these and these are quite affordable i mean i know yeah. there's other ones that are like beefier cases but for what we're doing this is going to be just fine um, but yeah, these are actually quite affordable and they're actually cheaper. I find if you're, if you buy them outside the state of California, <laughs> because, uh, for right now, I don't know why, but there's some weird, uh, taxing going on with it because of the, the prop, uh, 85 or so the water safety thing. Really? Well, weird. Yeah. I just, I've just bought mine through Amazon, but yeah, they, I just, um, I contact the guy I usually get it from, from Amazon. He wasn't selling them. And, uh, you know, I saw that the prices were kind of high. So I reached out to him and he's like, yeah, I'm not going to be selling to, uh, California residents anymore. I'm, I'm, uh, and so he suggested this other website, which was kind of like a, uh, ammo kind of, um, gun kind of, uh, sports website. Mm -hmm. And they actually had it for so cheap. I'm not kidding. Uh, $12, I think it was Oh wow, that's great. And shipped to your door. Here's the thing. They wouldn't ship to me again because of California. So uh, it seems like just the weird thing right now where they're just kind of like, I, I try and explain to them, it's like that, that's specifically about like products that you got to digest, <laughs> that, mm. that this isn't a product you need to worry about that. But the, just, so I think right now it's a little bit of a, a weird thing, but I love these and I actually went out and I spent another, a little bit more than I probably should have because I love these things. 
So, um, you know, I just think it's, it's going to work itself out. It's just politics. But I just wanted to mention that because it's just a weird thing right now. California. Yeah. yeah I hate relationship with California. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm always jamming out. I'm listening to music and stuff. You know, I kind of want to end this on a fun kind of happy note here. So um, I'm always kind of I, – I like how you have the Bluetooth headphones um, on your slide because it's always good to kind of be in a good mindset when you're building and stuff too. Mm -hmm. And I think music is a, is a key part of that mindset. I know I like mm -hmm. to listen to music while I'm building as well as setting up. So I'm really happy you kind of have that in your slide here. So yeah, and I, I have a pair. Uh, they don't sell them, the Motorola's. They don't sell them anymore, but these are they're probably like the exact same kind of same style. You just clip them on. You can turn the volume up and down. You can skip back and forward. And they, like I listen to podcasts all the time when I'm building, and it's just so great just to kind of – it keeps you going when you're doing things. You can learn things if you want to listen to audiobooks. And if your wife calls you and say, Hey, it's time for dinner, it's 10 30 at night. Are you going to come in? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good thing to have. And it's out of the way. You're not going to be tangled with any wires. I think, uh, it's a great tool to have. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think some resources we should mention in the course is, uh, some websites you all, sh everyone should be familiar with, um, amazon.com mono price um yeah great great sites with great products mm -hmm. yeah mono price especially if you uh live here in california like mm -hmm. you put you order the cheapest shipping and it'll be there next day yeah especially if you're buying any network cable speaker cable which we use a lot in the hobby they have excellent excellent stuff there in fact i use all their networking cable in all of my uh server builds uh, at work and they're perfect and that it's also kind of important to have a webcam. We wouldn't be able to talk right now if it wasn't really the web for the webcams and stuff like that. So it's good to kind of have that. We always kind of like our guests to have that. Yep. Get a, get a good webcam. These Logitechs are great. I have the one on the left. Uh, most people do. Um, but if you want to get the cheap one, I think they're like 20 bucks. And yeah. go ahead and get one. So it has a mic built in too. Um, and you'll be able to be heard. So you can just jump in on these Zoom sessions and, you know, hey, help me out, guys, and they'll be able to help you. You have the one on the left, too. Mm -hmm. So um, Google Drives, um, Google Drive, uh, sorry, Google Documents and Google Sheets. Um, that's kind of their uh, equivalent to what Microsoft Word and Microsoft mm -hmm. Excel kind of, but it's free. Yeah. And it's free and you can share your stuff out. So it's like, here's my layout from a couple of years ago. And I just um, typed up everything to there. And if there was something, hey, guys, can you help me out? I can share the document with, with someone else. They can look it over. And it's good for you so that you can document it. Uh, and that's the other thing, especially with this, you know, you're at the beginning of the year. You're starting to build things out. You will forget. You need to write down everything, and it help. I go back all the time to my documentation to see what I did um, on things, and it it is a lifesaver. So that yeah, the documenting there is really good. Like you know, the, just put your your layout right there so you can do quick calculations. Uh, works out great. And then I think in the next slide is uh, OneNote. If you don't use OneNote, I highly recommend using OneNote. It's free. It works on any platform. Um, it works on any device. So I could be writing down all the notes uh, for my for my display. And in fact, there's my display, uh, and I have it kind of everything tagged out. I can write down a list of okay, here's stuff I need to buy at Home Depot. I run to Home Depot. I open up my phone, and there's all the notes on my phone. Uh, it works so well. So make sure, yeah, get get some note taking program. If you use something else, that's great. If you don't have one. Uh, use one note. It's free. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's so important to take notes, get yourself on a schedule, which you could do on one note as well and stick to basically your schedule to make sure you're hitting all the, all your uh, goals that you want to make and stuff like that throughout the build process and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, the more you document, the more easier it's going to come when you actually start putting things away, uh, start putting things up, just when you have people helping you, 
being able to have documentation to show them to get a, like a, a learning experience, you know, a one-on-one -on -one of your own display. They don't have to learn like what a pixel is, what the universes is or whatever, just being able to hand them like a dot. I, I know people that even, you know, uh, colorize their cables and then they have uh, a, a one uh, note uh, folder uh, where all those key, uh, the colors are referenced back to. So then all he has to do is send that document to everyone helping him out. He doesn't even have to print it out and they're all ready to go. And they can reference back to that while he's working on some new thing that year. And so yep. it's, yeah. And you can see all, like all the different uh, pages that I have for different projects, mm -hmm. for audio, for X lights, for things like that. And like, I'll be up on my roof and it's like, oh, I need, I need to take a picture of something and stick it in OneNote. Done. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to definitely mention this because I love this slide, the, the fastest route to Home Depot, because that's yeah. honestly, uh, you're going to be going to Home Depot, not once, not twice. Let's just say, let's put a number out there hundreds of times. Three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> that, that happened. I was at Home Depot three times in one day, and I'm sure other people have done higher than that. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It, so knowing the best way to get there. And it's funny, you're just like, I think everyone, but like you have three different ways you can get there and like, you know, it's all about like getting there and swing around and go to Lowe's too at the same time. Yep, <laughs> exactly. If, if Home Depot doesn't have it, got to run to Lowe's. Yep. Yep. Plan, plan, plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think uh, I'm going to end it on these last three slides here. So I think this is a great point to make. Um, take pictures, video, share with others, help them learn, you know, do what, uh, Jason's doing here, you know, putting his knowledge into a, a easy to use documentation for other people to digest and to learn from. Um, and like he says at the very bottom, you, you may find yourself, uh, referencing your own videos and how you did it. So, it's yeah. And I, and I, I, ha I took all the footage for 2020 when I was, um, paring down. I haven't edited it yet. I haven't put it up. So hopefully I'll put it up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I go back and I watch my own videos to see what I did. It was funny. I was filming my behind the scenes uh, for this year and my neighbor, he came out and he was just like, he's like, Hey, um, what are you, what are you doing there? And I'm just like, Oh, just, uh, you know, filming it. It's going to help me. Uh, well, it's going to help the community as well as help myself because then I can reference back to it when mm -hmm. I have to remember, oh, shoot, was it this way or that way? Mm -hmm. And they just look right back to the video. I don't have to second guess yep. it. Exactly. And I love this. This is my philosophy in life. I heard this back way when I was younger, and I love it. Kiss, keep it simple. Don't overthink things. And that's mm -hmm. such the truth, isn't it? Yeah. It's huge. Like when I first started out with, with pixels, I, I mean, I had like, Oh, I'm going to make this rig and I'm going to do this and I can mount it quicker to my house and I can do this other stuff. And yeah. And I see it in the forms all the time too. People are overthinking it. And then when it came down to, Oh, uh, I hook and a zip tie was the best solution. So you will find in this hobby that usually the simplest solution is the best solution. So don't overthink it. See how you can scale back, scale down, because also, you know, the cost is going to add up too on a lot of these things. You overthink things, you're going to overthink the cost and things can add up. So yeah, keep, keep it simple as, as much as you can, not only for yourself, but for your family. Exactly. And uh, yeah, keep it simple. Take notes, make sure that you're, you're researching and thinking about what you'd be doing. This is the time where you don't have to necessarily start getting your hands dirty. You can start just, everything could be theorized on paper mm -hmm. and kind of work. So it goes kiss. And then to your last point, you know, your family, uh, yeah. don't ever forget about them. Don't, don't forget them. Do not put this hobby above your family. It's easy to, it can take up a lot of time. Uh, don't forget them. Your family will take away time from your hobby. I mean, my kid that right now, she's a, she's a toddler now. And so, you know, she's taking up all my time when I was upgrading my mega tree. It was like, I kind of had to do it at night, kind of had to do it quick, had to be like, Hey wife, can you help watch the kid while I can do this stuff? So you need to have a balance. And I've seen other people in this hobby where, um, the hobby has 
hurt their family because they put the hobby first, seriously, tear down the lights and sell them before you sacrifice your family. You want your family first. That's the whole reason you're doing this for family and friends. So make sure you put them first. If you're not, if you know, I've, I've cut builds. There's things that I want to do to my display that I just can't. And I just cut it out because it's like, you know what? My family needs me more. And that's more important. So do not forget your family. I couldn't say it better than that. That was perfect. I mean, that, you know, that's such an important thing. So I don't want to put anything else on top of that because that was, that was so well said, Jason. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'd, I'd rather be coloring with my kid than working on lights. Exactly. Lights are beautiful. She she runs around. You know, what what do we have this year? The um, the little drummer boy. Uh huh. That was her favorite song. She was uh -huh. out there going, going, oh, rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum. Uh -huh. And every time she saw the house, she would call the house for rum pum pum pum. Uh -huh. So it's beautiful. It's adorable. I love it. But you know, hey, you enjoy coloring. You know, with your kids while uh -huh. while you can. Um, put up lights. They're going to love the lights. They're going to love the lights, but don't sacrifice your family for your lights. Yeah. Think about your family safety first. Yeah. Cause that's a part of it too. You want to get back and eat with your family. So, yep. you know, exactly. Speaking of, I don't want to take up any more t of your time, Jason, that thank you so much. So you can spend time with your family. Yeah. And, hey, thanks uh, for having me back. I, yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll hopefully you could come back and we can have you for your expertise on audio. Because I think people yeah. could really benefit. I think, I don't know what time is best for you, but towards like uh, when people are really thinking about audio, I think we should dive into that. Because, uh, uh, you know, absolutely dive in. I did it existentials um, and I did it earlier. I did it, I think, like, I don't know, August or something like that, but before Halloween, because a lot of people will do Halloween displays and they want to put up their audio. And yeah, this is definitely, it needs its own topic, which is why I did existentials on it. Um, and then people put up their audio and they're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And this, I mean, I, I have links through my displays. I mean, so I can see what people have clicked on, what people have, um, like and whatever. And this has helped, I kid you not, thousands of people, um, improve their audio on their display, fix problems. And I've gotten just a ton of feedback because audio is one of those things where you think about it last. And, you know, you pick up, you put up your lights. That's great. But imagine running your lights with no audio at all. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's uh, huge. please uh, don't wait for him to come back to do that. Please check out his existentials. That was yeah. a great presentation. Um, balancing your levels. I mean, that's such a, a key thing. Um, and so to learn about that, check out his existentials. I hope Jason can come back and teach us on hot or not. And yeah, absolutely. Maybe the professional or the tri triers workshop as well. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you again, Jason, for coming on. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone.